What's going on guys? Today I want to talk about how to start a business to make more money for your life. And we're going to get into some of the deeper stuff here. Right now, there's a multitude of businesses online that are saying, hey, you should come here. You should be here. You should st start here. You should come and be part of this business because the money is good. And I'm about to talk about Airbnb. Life is a jungle. You need savage business and finance to lead you out of the jungle today. Personally, I am not a fan nor a hater of Airbnb, but I understand the concept. When you get into the Airbnb business, you do not get into the real estate business. You get into the hospitality business and this little quirk is throwing people. It's throwing people. This is what happened. Let's call it the YouTube marketing team. The YouTube marketing team aggravates drop shipping. It aggravates Amazon FBA. It aggravates Turo. It aggravates Airbnb. Here's what happened. A bunch of really smart people were sitting around one day and they were like, hey, if we promote this business, we can make a lot of money. And that's what they did. They promoted the business and they made a lot of money. Now, here's the thing. Personally, I do not want to be in a situation where I am checking people in and checking people out. And here's the thing. The average Airbnb owner only has one to three properties. That's the average Airbnb owner. These super Airbnb owners who have 12, 15, 20, 30, 40, 50 product, product, properties are kind of rare but essentially when you are starting a business and i'm going to speak from a perspective of you should enjoy that business airbnb from a operational standpoint if you're not a person who wants to get in and host people and because there are people who enjoy that there are people who enjoy hosting people and sharing people and having people come to their Airbnb, their B&Bs and stuff. They like that. But if that's not something for me personally, that's not something that I would want to do on a continual basis, which is one of the reasons that I am going to probably forego Airbnb. I'm just not going to do it because I don't want to do it. But here's the thing. The average person doesn't have the ability to sit down in way businesses because I've been at this for a while and I have developed some taste, some attributes on what I feel is good for me. May not necessarily be good for you may not be the thing that you want to do but for me i have developed these attributes and these tastes and airbnb and trucking and there's just a lot of things that just do not jive with what i consider to be enjoyable and this is what this video is about how to start a business to make more money to enjoy your life and one of the things that happens here is a like literally when i had the car rental business i had someone who was renting a car from me who had two airbnb now i want you to think about that you're renting a car from me but you have two non-owned airbnbs and I literally saw this because as uh, I did in the live stream the other day talking about how these individuals came on to the internet space and push the Airbnb narrative even though they weren't doing Airbnb. So one of the things that you have to understand 
And one of the things that you have to acknowledge is you shouldn't start a business strictly for the money. And this is one of the things that's very hard for people to understand. I literally see all of these people who are into the Airbnb space who, when it comes down to the operation of an Airbnb, the maintenance, the cleaning, the furnishing and all this other stuff, they're not really down for that. They're, they don't really enjoy that. And that's the heart of the business. And one of the things that you should do is explore business. And this is one of the things. Uh, there's a ton of videos about Toro, right? There's another car rental company called Hire Car. Go to YouTube and literally you will have maybe a page or two of Hire Car, and you will literally have hundreds of pages for Toro. There now, here's the thing with Hire Car customers are really rough on cars they're really rough on cars but if you were to get an established higher car business you can make more money than you can make on Turo as long as your cars were maintained not wrecked and once again I personally had a car rental business and literally after six months I felt once again this is personal this is how I feel this is how I feel I felt it was one of the worst businesses I have ever entered into in my life. It was just, and it wasn't because the business itself was bad. That wasn't the problem. The problem was me. The problem was me. I literally sat in my office in my house and made $3 million doing stuff online. I didn't have to meet anyone. I didn't have to buy anyone. I didn't have to spend money to advertise. I had to do nothing except come here on YouTube, make videos and put my offer out. And compared to that, the car rental business completely and absolutely sucked. It really sucked. And once again, if you are a person with a regular job making say 35, 40,000 dollars a year, and you get into the car rental business in your first year, you scale it up, and let's say your second going into your third year, you're doing $150,000 a year income in your pocket. And that's your first business. That's pretty much going to be very exciting. It's going to be very hip. It's going to be very happening. You're going to love that business because that business has put more money in your pocket than the job that you used to have. And this is one of the things that you have to do in looking at businesses. Will I enjoy that business model? Will I enjoy participating in that business? Will I enjoy serving customers and doing something? And I'm about to take a few steps back and I'm gonna talk about my successful businesses before YouTube. I am one of the few people who can come on YouTube and say, I was financially successful. I was making a lot of money. I was doing well before YouTube, before social media. I really enjoyed the upscale garage sale. I would get up every Saturday. I would go put my signs out and meet my customers. So I thoroughly enjoyed the process. I enjoyed meeting with customers. I enjoyed talking with people. I enjoyed having conversations with people from Craigslist. And that's why that business, which this business now has trumped that business in terms of time, because that business was almost 10 years. And this business is was started in 2009. 2019 was 10 years. 2020, my best year ever, was 11 years. 2021 was 12 years. 2022 was 13 years. And we're now in 2023, which is 14 years that I've been in this business. Here's the thing. If you get into a business that you don't enjoy or you get into what I call the hype and sell business, you go out, you create a business really cheaply, and then you sell it to someone else for a larger return than you put into it. There, there are people who enjoy that. That's part of their makeup that's part of what they do to make money that's part of the things that they enjoy but typically 
if you start and build a business that you thoroughly enjoy and you get it to the point where you have hired all the right people and essentially you do not have to get up and go into that business every day. Why would you sell that? It makes no sense. It makes no sense whatsoever. But once again, you should look at businesses that you thoroughly enjoy. Let's say you have a job that you absolutely hate. You hate the job, you hate the people you work with, you hate the culture, you hate all of that. That would be absolutely the worst business for you to start because you don't like it. Now, let's go ahead and compare and contrast that you have a job that you love. I have a friend that I helped start a business years and years ago. She was doing graphic design. She had started built up a really good portfolio in their company and she wanted to do her own business and I just taught her a few things. She already had that core skill of graphic design. She had that locked down and she needed to learn how to market and advertise. And once we started working together, she completely and absolutely sucked at marketing, just completely. And I said, okay, you're not gonna do that. What you're going to do, because you know, one of the things is she had a really good job. She's making six figures. She had cash money in the bank. She had good credit. I said, you're going to hire someone to do that for you since you absolutely sucked. And this is one of the things when I work with you, I don't censor my language. I don't speak up and I, I'm not like, rah, rah, rah. I was like, look, you absolutely suck. And she said, really? I said, yeah, you actually suck at getting customers, but you excel at doing the work. So we're going to take that off your plate. And this woman who had some money, had good credit. She spent $10,000 and it was like, Glendon, I'm not getting the customers. I already spent $10,000. You're going to have to spend more. What? You're going to have to spend more. And then once she got up her ads adjusted and everything, then the money started coming in. She literally uh, about two weeks after she called me about the 10,000 and then we got up to 15 because we had to figure out some stuff. She called me up. And she said, you will not guess what happened today. I was like, what happened? My ads put people into my funnel. And today I made $25,000 in one day. And I was like, really? Now, who told you we were going to make that kind of money? She said, you did. Now, here's the thing. And this is what she has done with her business. She only works on the projects she wants to work with. And now she has a team of designers under her company that work with her. So if she wants to go to Portugal or Brazil or wherever she wants to go, she can literally take up and go off and spend a month there while these people who work in her company get things done while she's not doing it. We haven't really talked business. She's a good friend. We talk every now and then. But I wouldn't be surprised if her business is doing 10 million a year. Wouldn't be surprised at all. But here's the, she enjoys her business. And we put this together maybe seven, eight years ago. And this is one of the things that people do not really want to understand. They do not want to be part of is the beginning. Pick something that you like to do. Do not start a business for the money. Don't do that because that's one of the things that can create a very rough time for you that you that can, it's just a terrible thing to do. And literally there's so many businesses that you can pick, but number one, you have to explore these businesses. Because like I said, one of the things that really works well <clears throat> online is if you have a business and you've been very successful in your business, operating your business, running your business, making money in your business, and then you come online and hey, this is what I did and I'm gonna show you. That works because people want to see if the business is real. However, one of the things I do is I take people 
and I teach them how to extrapolate, how to expand their vision, how they can make money, how they can set up their business on a professional, spiritual, different level that they don't know how to do. And that's one of the things I'm very good at because one of the things that you have to understand is all businesses need customers, all businesses have a service or product, all businesses have a way to market to their customer. Those three things, I don't care what you're doing, what you're selling, what you're making, those three things exist in virtually every business. And once again, getting customers, and I'm gonna be talking about that in some upcoming videos, is one of the hardest things that you will do in terms of establishing your business and putting yourself together and putting things in a better situation for you to grow your business, to make money, to, because here's the thing, there's nothing wrong with starting a business to make money. However, the issues are, if you put making money at the top of the list and everything else below that, because for me, here's my list. Number one, I must enjoy it. That's number one. That's Money is not at the top of my list. Number two, I must enjoy the customers. I must enjoy the business, I must enjoy the customers. And money's four or five. Money is not my top line item because here's the thing. If you get into a business that you enjoy, once again, I've been doing this 14 years. How can I do something that I just don't enjoy for 14 years? And there are people who are making millions of dollars in businesses that they absolutely hate. Millions, millions. And they're kind of stuck because they don't understand what business that they can get in that's going to give them that kind of income. Because here's the thing, and I want you guys to listen to me and listen to me quite well. In life, you're born by yourself. And in life, you're more likely, unless you just really have built up an amazing family structure, more likely you're gonna die by yourself. And everything in between is up to you to make it be what you want it to be. It's 100% on you. And one of the things that we're gonna do with the new training, and we're gonna do a lot of mindset stuff. One of the things that I did not do, and since I've been doing this 14 years, I can look back and, oh, I should have did a course on that. I should have did a course on making that or putting that together, and I never did. I never did a course on that. I never put that together. But going forward, I am going to put together this new course, this new thing, this new jizzle, this new whole thing, because here's the thing, and I'm not going to get into the dating situation, but I'm going to talk about that quite a bit in the training, because one of the things that I discovered that was extremely powerful, orientating myself first before approaching the woman. And it's really interesting. It's really interesting. So once again, first of March, and you're gonna see some big, bold, dynamic changes. You're gonna see that. And we're gonna get into a whole new thing. So be sure to subscribe. I'm like the whole, you keep changing your name cause you don't wanna subscribe, you lazy bum. Good Lord, just subscribe and you'll be good. And you'll get the videos. But for some reason, you keep changing your name, man. There, there could be another name change coming up. There's a whole bunch of stuff that's gonna happen starting the 1st of July. So be sure to subscribe. Be sure to go ahead and hit the bell notification thing and be on the watch out because I'm going to, like I said, so stay locked in, stay tuned, and I will be bringing this stuff to you.